All right, I've got my Spyderco knife here. Really love it. Nice edge on it. Really opens well. And uh, it's a little, little, little dirty there. I've got a get got some pocket lint on it or whatnot. But um, what I've noticed and what I love about it is I love the look of it. I think it just looks really attractive. Um, however, this very nice pocket clip, which I like how it holds the knife high so I can still grab it but yet pull it out of the pocket. That clip, which looks really nice, stop moving it so I can focus again, that clip that looks really nice is also really reflective and it catches the light and that lets people know, hey, there's something in his pocket. And since I carry this in my front right pocket quite a bit of the time, uh, it's getting a little too much attention. People will notice it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these three screws, remove the clip itself, and then I'm going to put a flat uh, Krylon type paint on top of it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if I want to go with black. I think black would a flat matte black would go well. But I do have some matte uh, flat colors um, for hunting uh, flesh tones, earth tones. Uh, I'm going to look at what I have and, and make an decision that way. I think no matter what I put, as long as it's solid on this piece, it'll still look nice against the black and the silver of the knife. Um, but let's get to it. I'm going to remove this, and then I'm going to totally strip this. Uh, I'm not going to sand it, even though that would make it bond a little better, because if I don't sand it, and I really second-guess this later, <laughs> I take the paint off and polish it up again, and it'll look nice. Um, so, here we go. All right, to take off these, I need a torque... Uh, torque bit. This is a number six, T6. They might be a little stiff. You might have to fight them. But you just take, loosen them on up. Take off that clip. Now, it might look like I uh, didn't have to work very hard to loosen those. I kind of uh, started them off camera just to loosen them. But you want to take them out and Oh, should have loosened that one a little bit more. Anyway, I like to keep the bits together, and then I'll take a piece of styrofoam and stick them in there to make sure they go in the same hole. They don't actually have to because they're the same size screw, but I kind of like to put them in the same hole. And you can see the little discoloration there. You can see that's totally clean, but I'll go ahead and suds these sides up. Uh, six is also the number for these three guys here on mine, uh, maybe for yours. Pivot screw is actually a bigger set. I don't know what number that is offhand, but I will get that for you. All right, but now it's a nice smooth pocket knife. That'll fit in the pocket a little nicer as I carry it that way until I can return the clip to it after I get rid of that shine. It really does shine, which looks very attractive. I'll show you the screw real quick. It has a little bit of a brown type of... I'm going to say Loctite, but uh, probably a generic version of it. Kind of give it a little resistance, so I might put a little bit of uh, Loctite in it when I put the clip back in. But uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, enjoy carrying it without the clip for a couple days just in the pocket uh, while I wait for the paint to dry on that. So, on the step three. Okay, next I'm going to take out this pivot screw. It's a Torque 8. Oh, that's for Torque 6. Oops. Alright. I want to be very careful to go straight up and down with it. It'll be easy to locate. It's the only one that size. So I'm just gonna put it in the same tray. This little friends. Sometimes I stick them in the styrofoam, but this time I have to not. So I'm just gonna open it. It's gonna lock back for me. It's a good idea also maybe to tape the blade so you don't accidentally cut yourself. I'm gonna live dangerously. Putting back in my T6. Yep, T6. Double checking it. Be 
We're just breaking the seal on these. I'll do the same to the other side, just breaking the seal. Hey buddy, you coming out here? Yeah. Come on up. I'll to... talk to my preschooler for a second. So I just lifted the other side off. Got my preschool age son in here, so let's see if I can show you the doing the other side. Because you're gonna be a quiet boy, right? Yeah. Good. Just loosening that up. That's where the line you go through. Be very careful to set it down. See the washer there? It's a washer on each side. I'm going to put the blade down carefully because I didn't tape it. These washers are very thin, so you want to be very careful not to bend those. I'm just going to flip this over. Now, on this side, the left side, as you hold it, uh, these are like posts there, so um, when I turn it, I think it's spinning a little bit, and that's why it's not coming all the way out. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and hold those so they come out, but I'm going to take the pivot pin out. Can't get this confused either, so I'll throw that in there. And I'm going to hold this stud so I can be able to loosen it. It's just spinning in my fingertips a little bit. Eventually I can get it out. Sure enough, there we go. Here's the other one. I'm just going to pinch it tight. And I've pinched pretty hard because it's wanting to rotate along with the screw head, and that's no good. I guess we'll maybe uh, go to the next one. Yeah, that one's done. That one keeps spinning in my fingers. It'll be easier just to turn it that way. I have to get something rubberized to hold it so it doesn't keep rotating on me. But then I'll separate these pieces out. I'm gonna see if I can get my preschooler to just calm down. All right, you're looking at the internals of my knife. I've got the Kydex, sorry, not Kydex, G10 handles off to the side here. Stainless steel metal here. I believe it's just a regular stainless steel liner. I don't believe it's the same metal as the blade. It definitely feels different in weight. And this is again the HCR 13 MOV. Nice spider co knife. Love it. Um, what I was doing is I'm taking off the shine. As you can see here, it catches the light quite nicely. It looked really attractive, I thought, but a little too much attention in the pocket. Now this is a uh, it's still seeing a good amount of reflection on it, but I think the black is going to stick out a lot less on a pair of blue jeans. Uh, I can store the metal on, on the green there, where that really caught the light, caught attention. Oh, there's something in your pocket, <laughs> where this will be more muted. Now this is just one coat. I think after I do another coat, it'll dull it up a little bit more. Maybe if I uh, rough it. Might, but I'm gonna throw a second coat on this evening. I'm not putting any on the back side. My reasoning is one, this fits flush against the blade or against the handle, and it doesn't need to have anything between it. And two, this piece, more so right here, this is where it has the pinch point and it rubs. So I'm gonna rub the paint off it anyway, um, even though it's a hard paint right there. Or even if I don't, uh, there's no there's no benefit to it on the on the bottom, on the inside it rather. Uh, I do want to make sure when I'm hitting these second and maybe a light third coat. If I can hit the edge, that'd be great. But uh, ultimately, I think just the outer part, and yeah, it's going to wear. That's why I like to have a couple light coats on it. And if it does wear, uh, so what? I take it off and I put another coat on. But that's after the first coat. And uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and polish up. So 
some Flitz polish, maybe some Mother's Mag polish uh, right in here to get this nice and super slick. It's already pretty darn slick, but I'm going to do as much as I can without removing the material, but just giving a nice hard polish there, then polish up the blade so it looks real nice before I put it back together. And I still haven't soaped up and cleaned up the handles yet, but I may well do that this evening. With a preschooler, you do things in stages as you can. Well, tonight I'm quick to do another coat before putting my kid to bed. Just wanted to show you this. After wiping off the blade, being extra careful because I've not appropriately covered the cutting edge, which is not a good idea. I want to cover that up. You can see. Now you can't feel it. It feels glass smooth. So what you're seeing is just visible. Not you can't feel it. But you can see the uh, the lines, the wear lines, kind of the groove all the way around. And on this side, not as severe, but you can see it. There's a light ring, whoops, way in the outside here. It's more of a line. And then the wear circle here, I think you can see that well about where the washer is. And here, you can see, if you look at it, if I can show you carefully, you can be very careful with my washers. The big washer, the diameter of the outside there. easier to get my fingertip wet. I licked, licked the tip of my finger and I touched it and it stuck to it. I'm not going to want to leave it moist. The small one fits right inside there. So you can see how that works. So you can see there's definitely, I'm going to have to dry those off lightly, there's definitely some friction there. So if I polish this bad boy up, get it nice and smooth, clean these up, put it nice and smooth. Now was that grid in there from the factory or was it from the use? Who knows, but if I get it a little bit cleaner, maybe I'll have even a little bit smoother action. Not that it wasn't smooth. It was working very well and I have no complaints with it, but I can't leave well enough alone. I think some of you watching this know what that's about. Alright, I did my two coats and I noticed it was a, a little bit of a spray paint fart right here. So I wanted to sand it out anyway, but also I wanted to sand between before I do the last coat. So I took some 1000 super fine grit sandpaper and I'm just lightly rubbing it over and as you can see here by the glow on the sides the reflection on the sides the uh, paint on the edges came off real easy but that was the, the stuff on the edges in particular was was one coat and there's still some on the flat side a little bit um, but this is what's going to look when it's a little bit worn, a little bit more distressed, I think, if it was a pair of jeans. I don't think it looks too shabby. But I'm going to rough it up a little bit more before I put another coat on, but then that should be ready to go. And still working on polishing up the blade center. Alright, I went ahead and taped up the blade with some painter's tape, so it's easy enough to get off. So you can see there, nice and shiny almost mirror-like quality. I've still got some fingerprints on it from handling it afterward, but that's the shine. Use some Mother's Magwell polish on here. Again, I'm not trying to polish up the whole blade that shiny, but uh, this is the part that would sit inside where my handles. The handle like such. So the smoother that is, the better. Um, Spyderco uh, makes a, a lot of their high quality knives here in the States, um, but they also make uh, these very excellent knives in China, But so I don't imagine the factory has time to glass smooth these. It was really smooth, don't get me wrong, but I get a nice little polish on there to make it glide even smoother. Now, if you had this knife when it's all done next to another knife freight from the factory, would you notice a difference? Well, I, I obviously would like to think so. <laughs> Otherwise, this is just a project to kill time. Um, but if you weren't told, if you weren't looking to feel the difference, would you notice it? Well, maybe not. There you go. Alright, so, not doing anything to this metal, except uh, I'm going to take some Hops 9, run it over the, all the surface, dry it, Take some something like a regular oil, like a hops lubricating oil, and just kind of rub it over the whole thing, wipe it off, let it sit before I reassemble it so everything's been thoroughly cleaned internal. Went ahead and hand washed with soap and water. A little bit of water spot in the center there. Uh, the G10 plastic. 
Uh, not because it was overly dirty, just because, well, if you're taking it apart, you might as well clean it. Um, you can see the smooth surface there has a lot of scratches on it from when it was being made. Not a big deal, because that's inside the blade. You're inside the knife handle. So anyway, um, I'll go ahead and just clean these. I'm not going to show you that. That's just wiping stuff on and off. Probably not even necessary, honestly. Um, and then I'll reassemble this and see, see how it works. Alright, this is my first time reassembling, so uh, I'm going to make some errors here, I'm sure. Got the screws kind of laid out. This is the... I forget what to call it. Anyway, it's the sleeve where the screw screws into on both sides, so you need to have those out as well. One, two, three, uh, and this is the detent. That's not one of those. Three. Okay, alright. So we've got one, two, and three. Alright, one, two, three. So, of operations here. It looks like this one's going to have to go in after. So, I'm trying to figure out in my head how I wanted to hold this in my hands. Let's see if I can do this in a take. I've got my uh, baby monitor on here because I'm watching a little dude, my newborn today. He is sleeping, so while he sleeps, daddy toils on a project. And you want to make sure it goes in straight, but I'm just getting it. I'm worried about just not thread, uh, cross threading and getting it just snug enough where it won't fall out. Kind of a placeholder, if you will, as I get these other pieces in there. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking the insert, putting it in the slot, lining it up, looking through the hole, looking sharp, dropping in the screw, trying not to wiggle too much main concern, I can do this 80 times, but I just don't want to cross thread this thing. So very lightly feeling, letting the screw go in its grooves. I just want to get it, see if I can show you there, I just want to get it finger, not even finger tight honestly, I just want to get it going. So we're going to get it started. And not cross threaded of course. There you go, now I've got two started. The more you have in there, the more secure it is, the less likely it is to shift this way or that way. Put undue pressure on the screw as you're attaching it. It's likely to mess up your knife. As would have been said earlier, I'll say again, this will void your warranty. Not that these are that terribly tricky. Alright, so I've got my three on this side set. So I've got, this is the right side of the knife. See my, um, I'll show you the top here. The pieces will line up like so. One, two, three. And this top here has where I have this, I'm calling it a detent. It just sits right in there. It's a little post. Got to make sure to insert the lanyard, uh, <laughs> it's a piece for the lanyard, I can't think of its name. I'm sure it has a formal name. Those in the knife world will know full well what I should be calling it. Alright, you get a pivot. Big old pivot screw, put those two over here. Now, these are where you can really foul everything up pretty quick. Is with these washers. Whoops, they're out in the frame. They're so thin that you really don't want to bend them or it makes everything you've done for not. Now the left side of the blade is where I'll have the big and the small and I can tell because I've got the two two circle lines here from where where the side only had the one with the one is the smaller size. Now if that's wrong it came from the factory wrong. I won't bother writing a letter to the Chinese government on it though. I think I'll pass on that. So now again these are just finger, not even finger snug, these are just lightly snug just to hold them in place. I've got these guys lined up. My little post came out a little bit. Looking it over, feeling pretty decent about that. The insert's got a dent on one side, it's kind of like a D, so it's you can't put that in wrong. You're going to put it together in the locked position. 
because that way you don't have to mess with pushing this down. You'll see the detent kind of acts as a stop. Again, it's probably not called a detent. Stop. You get your pivot point. Big old pivot screw set off to itself. You know what I forgot? I just talked about these washers and I didn't put one on. Now I'm trying to clean these off a little bit, but you've got to be super crazy careful on this. So I'm going to get a more firm surface. Put it in the camera. I'm just going to lightly Q-tip on a flat surface. I don't want to do it on the top of uh, my surface down below because it's got cardboard that's underneath uh, the gun mat. And I don't want that softness to let it move and perhaps bend this very flat washer. My hands I've just washed, they're very clean, there's no oils on them. Um, I'm working in a very cool space, well not terribly cool but it's mid 60s in here. So I'm not perspirating, there's no oil in my hands, my hands have been scrubbed pretty darn clean so I'm not worried about extra oils coming on. This would be the time where I'd want to put a little light oil on there so I'm going to go ahead and maybe do that now off to the side very gently. I'm just going to use one of my gun oils. I'm not using one with a cleaner because I don't want to wear on these very delicate washers and maybe that won't happen. But If I used something like CLP I'm afraid that would have an undue effect because it's really good at what it's meant to do and this isn't really design purpose so I'm using just a regular oil. Alright. Lightly dabbed it on there, put the washer on. Oh. I'd rather pick it up, take it off a lot of times than accidentally get too forceful and bend the thing. So I'm just lightly dabbing with the Q tip that has oil on it. Just one of these applicator needles to get oil on the Q-tip. Now I'm going to put, yeah, you know what, my mirrored surface here, I'm just going to put just a, I'm just going to rub a little bit of light oil where I wouldn't be able to get it later. If you can see it, it's just ever so little. It's just more than, more than nothing, but not really much of something. If that makes sense. Probably not. I'm get a new Q-tip. This one's Spent. Put just a light amount on the Q-tip. A lot of it will soak into the Q-tip. I'm just going to put it right. This whole surface here. I'm just put it on both sides right away so I don't have to worry about it. Inside the grooves. I'm just going to run it through. This one's too small, so I'll put it on both sides. And again, just would be really hard to get the oil product in there. Now, granted, with the product, uh, oil product there, it's going to grip a little bit of dust. But I'm pretty, pretty decent about cleaning my knives, disassembling it. When there wasn't a functional issue, I think would demonstrate that level. All right. Now to put it on. Battery is showing it's going low. It's awesome. Wiped off the extra there. Kind of acting like a cleaner, if you would. I've already cleaned it, polished it, but there we go. Is that wasteful? Is that unnecessary? Probably. Can I can I afford that extra dot of oil? I think I could swing it. All right. If I lose power, I'll carry on project give me an update of how it went together all right feeling good about that all right so I'll put my other washers on I'm gonna go ahead and clean these washers like I did the other one but off camera save my battery I'm gonna put on the second skeletal insert in the top and then snug it up um, lightly finger tight on all of them then I'll go back finish tightening the other side come back finish tightening on this side and we'll take a look at it performance-wise at the end. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut the filming of it now because my battery's going to die. I might as well control where I stop it. See what I can do with this bit of battery. I went ahead and put the skeletal inside on, put the G10 on top, put the 1, 2, 3, just lightly tighten. I've got my big pivot screw here still to go in. I've got my three that are same size bit that, but rounded. They go up here. And to make sure you got it right, if you look inside, which is hard to see, I could see threading on this side, and I could see threading on this side. Okay, so I've got my one, two, three screws slightly tightened here. We've got the skeletal inside the G10. I'm going to put the pivot screw in next. Now this is the one that took a different bit, so I'm going to take this out. Is it the big one? Oh, here it is. It's the uh, G810 or T. Yeah, T8. Again, main concern is not stripping it. So we'll go nice and slow, make sure it finds its way into its grooves. I won't even say I'm finger tightening it, I'm just taking out any loose slack. Alright. Feeling good about that. Alright. Now we've got to just put these last three screws in and then tighten everything up just a little bit tighter so it holds tight and snug. Alright, so I went ahead and I tightened all the screws, these last three I was about to put in and I realized those are the ones that hold the clip in and the clip is still drying a little bit um, from its uh, hopefully final coat. But uh, you can, if you over tighten this you, it impedes how you open it so you gotta, you gotta mess around with it. If you have a torque screwdriver you can look to a certain weight but um, the blade needs to be cleaned. It's pretty dirty from having the tape on it. I've wiped it down, but I haven't cleaned it. That'll be another another day. But uh, yeah, so oops, feeling pretty good about that. All right, so just got to clean off the blade, get the handle on. I'll show you that. But uh, really, not too terribly difficult. I think the biggest trick would be you got to have the right right bits. I've got this nice little kit that goes all the way down to what is it, T5? No, T4. Um, a lot of general purpose bits stop at uh, T10. You need to be able to go to T8, T6 to get this apart. Um, now you could put a little dab of Loctite on these when you put them in there. Um, I'll, I'll monitor it, make sure they don't come loose, and if they do I'll put some Loctite in it, but I just don't possibly it might be a little overkill. But uh, there's definitely no harm in doing it, as long as you know you'll have to work that much harder to get it out if you take it apart again. So, anyway, maybe I will clean this blade while the paint dries. Well, went ahead and did this, and uh, now if you've been thinking about doing it because you've got a whole bunch of gunk in there, or your son uh, spilled the biggest thing of soda in your center console and it's covered in goo, now what happened to this knife, but I have another knife I've got a clean, although it doesn't have screws, it has rivets, so that'll be a real treat. It's got all this gunked up pop and soda and dust in it, so that'll be a real real fun cleaning endeavor. But uh, if you've been thinking about taking yours apart because something has happened, you dropped it in the mud and it's caked in there, well now you've seen a video of how to do it and I did the dangerous part and now you can feel a little bit more confident when you take it apart what you'll see on the insides. Uh, there are a lot of other videos on how to do this. I'd rocked more than one before I do it the first time on anything I care about. Um, even a regular pocket knife. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be safe, be smart. Alright, back in my very shadowy garage. The clip is. probably needs a little bit more time to be 100% cured, but I think it's dry enough where I'm going to handle it. Sorry for the beep. That's what it's going to look like on it. Black on black. Still think the other way looks super attractive. Maybe even my preference probably is actually. But since I'm going to uh, try to conceal, oops, I'll put it on this side. Conceal it in my pocket. 
pocket clip you can put on either side, which I kind of like. But um, you can also put it like that if it floated your boat. I like uh, point up so that when I reach into my pocket, um, yeah, there's a risk of poking yourself if it wasn't covered. This is a well made knife, so the tip is well past put away. So I don't have that fear. If I didn't have that kind of feature there, I wouldn't necessarily feel so good about point up. But then when I reach in with my hand and I pull it out, it's ready to, uh, to, p to put into action, you know, opening those boxes and whatnot. So this will be how it sits. I'm, I usually carry it in my right side pocket. So I'll put the clip on the right side. But I do like how you can move it. If for some reason, you know, your, your, your carry system requires you to put it on the other side, you can easily adjust accordingly. I put my uh, mini flashlight on my left side, so flashlight there, this on my right hand. Uh, <laughs> that's just how I do it. Your procedure might be different than mine, and that's, that's fine by me. Oh my goodness, this is the part that my big nummy thumbs don't do as well on. You know what, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, and again, I should, if you're a more patient person, which I am not, uh, it'd be good to let this fully cure, no matter what the can, paint can says, how long it takes. Oops, wrong size bit. It always takes just a little bit longer to be 100%, so I should probably wait. I've acknowledged that, and I've acknowledged that I'm not patient, so. Patient enough, anyway, how about that? Now, you might be asking yourself, wait a second, I thought you want... Oops wanted this to not catch the eye of so many people with the shiny clip and you're, I see you're putting in the screws oh come on, I do two things at once see so you're putting in the screws and they're still shiny silver doesn't it defeat the whole point of this I, I I get what you're, I get that line of thought, and I, I don't I'm not even going to disagree with it. How about that? Um, to put paint on this would in fact require me to make it. I'd have to put it in such a tight nick niche that I'm afraid it won't grip well with the screwdriver, and I don't want to compromise that. Plus, I'm not about to go ahead and hit all these other screws. So above the pocket, there'd be this screw anyway. I'm not about to do that either. Now, if you wanted to, if it's more of a just, you're totally going just functionality, and you want to, like, dark coat the whole bloody thing, well then, you know, power to you, it doesn't matter. You can put it together and even Krylon coat the whole thing. Um, that's, that's fine. That's just not what I'm doing. So if you want to do that, think that's the better way to go. Again, I'm not going to argue you. I'm not going to disagree with you. That might be what you want. I want to keep this knife looking as close to possible as possible to what it looked like when I when I picked it up because that's what I liked about it. I liked the look, I liked the functionality, and particularly I liked the clip style. I like it to ride uh, where I can grab it easily, but yet it's mostly concealed in my pocket. There's a Gerber knife uh, that's straight that is, I can fit in any pair of pants. I love this knife too. It's a little bit wider though, so I can't fit it in every pair of pants. Got some pairs of jeans I want. Can't wait to wear out and never ever buy again. But uh, you know, I, I think predominantly this is the part that was catching the eye. See how this, even this smudgy, dirty blade from being taped, still don't clean that fully, catches the light. But these screws don't really do that so much. This clip did. Now the clip doesn't. Still got a sheen to it, more like a satin sheen. So when that's in the pocket, hopefully it catches the eye a little less. Not going to stick it in there again yet because again it, I really should have waited longer before I put that in but I again am not patient enough for that I guess I only have so much energy for detail work just assembling is enough enough rambling thanks for watching there you have it the black doesn't jump out as much there's still a well, satiny sheen, I'd say, but as you can see, it doesn't jump out of the pocket as much. If I raise it out, you can see how much more 
the silver caught the light. So that's how much the clip was catching it before, but the black much more muted.